Welcome to the summit, Who Are You? From the Head to the Heart. And I have the pleasure to introduce you to Lisa Templeton. Hi, Lisa. Hi, it's an honor to be here, Susan. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. And I'm excited because you have this book that you've written, Letting It Be, and it's mindful lessons toward acceptance. And I've read it and it's beautiful. And I've also met you before, so I know you a little bit. And, <laughs> and you, are, um, you have a PhD in psychology and then you're an author and you're writing another book now too, right? And That's true, you, yes. Yeah. And you also a musician and a poet and a spiritual guide. So you, you, are, you have a lot of hats, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, I do. And I, you know, I mean, I like to integrate it into one, you know, and try to meet people where they're at, you know, in terms of um, the healer within me and, um, you know, and then also continue working on healing myself because it's a, it's a constant process. Yeah. And you also have the center interpersonal healing center. Where yeah, the Personal Healing Center, and uh, it's just outside of Denver, in Co I'm in Colorado, and uh, it's been going on for about 12 years, um, just a, lo a lovely team of beautiful healers, and um, just a beautiful space to yeah. create some safety for people to come. Hasn't been used that much with COVID, <laughs> but right. new yeah. time again, uh, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I kind of want to talk about. I, I want to talk about um, this. You could say it's a healing. It's kind of the journey from the head to the heart. But um, that also implies like uh, waking up to your heart or healing whatever you think you are and come to what are you really. And that's, that's what I mean from the head of the mind stream and the story and the commentator to mm. like who you really are established in your heart as just the being you are here now and um, your true nature so do you um, want to speak about any of this that I talked about oh goodness oh there's so much coming up uh, I, I just I really love the theme uh, of this summit and um, it's it's been within my spiritual journey as it is um, this past weekend and um, you know, just working on heart opening, um, front and back, um, because it's certainly, um, yes, our head is a comp, you know, we have stories and the narrative that, that continues to, to run. Um, we're thinking constantly, some researchers say something anywhere between 7,000 and 40,000 thoughts a day, um, based on neurons firing, um, that's, you know, enormous. Um, and so it's just so important to be in our body. Um, and I believe that the crux of embodiment is within the heart. Um, and the heart is vast. There's, um, you know, at least my experience of my heart, I can only speak to my own, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, just the open, you know, working on opening that, I mean, I think we've been uh, conditioned in so many ways to protect ourselves. Um, and, and it's usually the heart that's closed in protection. Um, and, you know, to be able to be vulnerable, to share your story, to, to truly sit in who, you know, the true nature of who you are, um, you know, that means, I, I think, being comfortable in your body. And I think a lot of people are more comfortable in their minds. It's a lot of thinking going on in, in American culture anyway. Uh, and um, sure, we need to think about what we're thinking about. I am a cognitive behavioral psychologist. So um, essentially it's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are all interconnected. Um, if I think something, it's going to affect my heart. But a lot of times we're not even paying attention to that uh, because, you know, the human doing of, of our society. And, you know, we're just um, constantly in motion. And yes, we are always fluid, um, but we have to take time to slow down and feel and be. Uh, there's a lot of nurturing I find that my heart needs. 
Um, and that entails, you know, just sitting with it, being with it um, as much as I can. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot about actually being with what arises in the body as maybe senses or emotions or thoughts it's, or something outside of us, you know, some action or whatever. It's, it's, it's like we are so caught up in the business of the doing and we kind of overlook our being in the whole thing and then we miss a big part of ourselves or something like that. I think, you know, it's very uh, common to do that because it's, it's quite a balance. I mean, with all of those thoughts splashing constantly and are, and I'm, I mean, most of them are unconscious. Um, I can be conscious of, of certain thoughts in my mind um, and, you know, kind of check them a little bit and, and challenge, you know, what, what are they saying? You know, what's true, all of that. Um, but, uh, you know, I have to balance that with time spent spent with my body, with my heart, um, and um, you know, I I believe that, like I said, it's the crux of in, embodiment. How can I be in my full body while I still am paying attention to you know what's going on in the world and what I have to do, you know, tasking and you know just general life things. Um, while also thinking a lot, you know, whether it be future or past, um, there's a lot going on here. We got, we got quite the system. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's, integration it's, is so key, right? Like, I mean, um, I could, people, I, I, you know, in, and I sat and talked with so many people and I have the honor of really getting inside of people's minds and in their hearts. Um, and a lot of people live here up, um, like just not really paying much attention to the body or specifically the heart. Um, and because it can be very, I think, you know, a lot of the reasons is because it can be very, very overwhelming with emotion. That's where emotions live is in the body. Um, yeah. So we are sometimes so scared of feeling our emotions that, that we just rather want to just be with the story and up in our heads and our thoughts and just focus on those maybe unconsciously we may just do that not even knowing it right or it may be a habit too yeah. mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's, it can definitely be a habit and a conditioned pattern uh, because I don't think embodiment I mean it's very feminine to embody the body yeah you know, I mean you know in our culture uh, men you know specifically have that tendency um, of just living in the brain um, and very logical, very thoughtful of, you know, which is a, an incredibly useful tool. This is not, you know, one or the other, it's both. Um, and, and having both to, um, to really, I believe, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm activating my heart and, and working to open it, my mind and how I'm thinking and perceiving and the stories I am telling myself are part of that um, and, you know, helping me to see and understand all the parts of myself um, to see and understand that I really am safe. There is really nothing to fear. You know, I, I mean, as, all, as long as I'm connected and, and um, understanding that I, I, I can, you know, really be whoever, you know, I show up to be in balance um, and then, um, you know, there's a, sh there's a light that shines through that. Um, yeah, it's what, what I feel like. and what I see with people too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Something happens in that when you're with, with all of you, right? Like with all of oneself or, <laughs> it, um, like the light or it's almost like something you, you, uh, recognize something in you. That may not even be something you can say is you, but it's just something like grace or what, what, what or the isness yes. of life, or yeah, it's 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 like all that uh, can encompass and and embrace everything else, right? Like like the blue sky, the clouds float by. There's thunder, there's lightning. Sometimes sometimes it's just clear blue sky, nothing, mm -hmm. and 
sometimes tornadoes or you know but it's uh, but it comes and goes right but the blue sky is always there and that's what it, is that ah the heart light or god or true nature is just always there and everything else comes and goes and what's always there is basically the only thing I can rely on but that's it's not even me I can't even see I can rely on it because I think what's there is just there and I mm. add the eye to it or so you know I don't know but it's again you know it's my mind trying to figure yeah, out totally I, I mean I, I love it I mean that's the beauty of of the mind you know I mean as long as you know it's tempered I think by the heart um, and that emotions flow and you know they're released and you know, I mean, and this understanding of what is beyond us or what is within us, because uh, what is beyond us, I believe, is within us. Um, and how do I connect with what is what that beyond is? Um, and, you know, it's going to be different for each person and how they, you know, whether they talk about God or divine feminine or, you know, the universe. Um, I, I mean, I love it all. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, you know, it's like, I just want to connect and I want to stay connected as much as I can, because, you know, the heart is almost like a portal to that. Um, and, you know, if I'm just do spinning around in my mind all the time, it, it uh, I can start to feel very overwhelmed um, and stuck uh, is, is what I find, you know, within myself and talking with so many people around um, the, the mind and how it you know, loops, there's a lot of looping patterns going on there. Um, so I don't want it to loop as much as I, you know, I catch the loop and go, okay, hold on, let's bring the heart into this. How are we feeling? What's going on in my body? Take a breath, check in. Um, and then I'm connected again to what is beyond. Um, and then I'm connected to my higher self. I mean, Whatever you want to, however you want to think about it, it is kind of fun. And, and, and I, um, I think there are many paths to God or to, you know, the universe and just being, um, you know, connected to that is how I know, you know, my, my true nature. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we can name it what we want. Like you said, you know, it's, it, it doesn't matter what the name is. It's just, we, I think everyone somewhere knows something in them is just this eternal ancient something. Um, yeah, like I'm here and I cannot deny that I exist. I cannot deny that how I exist. I don't actually know, really. I, I don't know if I can trust my senses or what I'm taught throughout childhood or what my thoughts, you know, that stream tells me and all mm -hmm. that. But it doesn't matter. I just know I am here. And in this like just that just existing in itself is like this beautiful peace or and and there's do I need to know anything else basically right or just mm. yeah it's a, I am you know I mean it's mm -hmm. that whole you know that that foundation um, of existence um, even though you know I, I find sometimes it's not always that comfortable uh, you know I mean I think I you know we we were spiritual beings at one point and we got, you know, t put in this physical body that is, you know, <laughs> really kind of, you know, it's, it changes and it continues to age and, you know, it doesn't always work in the way that we want it to and, and all that kind of stuff. So, and I think that really plays into people, you know, moving more into their heads um, because it's more comfortable there. Um, at the same time, it's okay to be uncomfortable. For a little while. Um, uh, it's like you were saying about the, the blue sky and the clouds and, you know, and I love Pema Chodron does a lot of, you know, those um, metaphors around that. I love her books around that. Um, but it's always there and, and it's temporary. Um, you know, the, uh, the discomfort is temporary, uh, is, is what I find. I just, you know, have to learn how to perceive it in a way that and again, that's where my mind comes into play. I can be like, well, how do I want to perceive this? What is, you know, I have a choice there. Um, and, um, you know, how I perceive, you know, how I feel in my body, how I perceive my mind, like, oh my gosh, these thoughts are horrible. What is wrong with me? You know, I mean, is that really me? <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm not really entirely sure. Thoughts are like energy. 
um, and they they run through. And so I do believe that uh, you know when it comes down to our true nature, you know our you know the core of our being, um, you know it, it's that foundation of I am. And, you know, that's not always going to be full of beauty and light. And as we were, you know, chatting a little bit just before we started recording, we have those, you know, opposites that, you know, if we don't have joy, you know, we, we, you know, we don't have sorrow, we, we must have, you know, all of these polarities to, to fill the whole um, and the whole of our existence. Um, and, you know, we can be lots of things all at once, which is pretty cool <laughs> yeah yeah we can be it all and we are it all you know if you want to be it or not we are <laughs> so what, what can we do <laughs> you know we don't really have a choice i guess because it is everything right it's just what arises arises and goes mm -hmm. and goes and uh, yeah it's um yeah and and that's part of really um just just a quick um you know mention about the book um letting it be is really about that whole, like just being with whatever arises. The first chapter is like, be wherever you are um, and allowing yourself to be wherever you are. I mean, I might feel uncomfortable. I might feel, you know, I might have loops in my head I don't like or, or whatever, or, you know, I might feel like one of my chakras is blocked or just have an upset stomach, whatever it is um, that I can be there, meet it, where that experience is and learn from it, find more information, deepen into it a little bit um, to learn more uh, about ourselves. I, I do think um, that, you know, we're in constant learning. Um, th there's so much we don't know about this incredibly complex system that we have, you know, the brain, the body, all the ways that they're integrated um, psycho neuroimmunology. I mean, there's so much out there that, you know, we're learning through science and, and, you know, bringing, you know, this idea of, um, I am and, you know, the heart and, and crown and all that into a true understanding from a scientific perspective. It's not all just, you know, a feeling of, you know, connection per se. There's something, you know, um, inherent in, in like the physics of, of it all, which is fascinating to me, um, you know, just being able to under, you know, to continue to learn and try to try to understand and stay as objective as I possibly can around whatever I find internally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the whole science also reveals that, you know, there's, actually nothing really here you know that whole quantum physics for example but it's also we are interconnected everything is so interconnected and it's more like energies interconnecting constantly appearing like this appearing beautifully like this right but this um can you really find it if you look and and that's actually um, about the heart you know because i feel like the heart is our guru i mean it's nice to get all this knowledge and information from outside about everything but somewhere it's like okay if I just sit with myself and just listen to myself and what what comes to me, what about who I am, who, what, it, it seems like something happens in that where it's almost like answers, not that they have to be answers, but it's almost like it just automatically reveals itself for oneself and you become more and more clear about mm -hmm. uh, who you are, what you want to do in the world and what is your life or uh, uh, it's like you you getting you're guided from within somehow and agreed yeah i mean because there's like a it's almost like there's a mind in the heart um because wisdom comes like you know i mean it's and, and if i ask uh, and i do this um you know i do a lot of inquiry practice with friends and you know within myself you know asking specific you know more deep questions of my body and my heart and then you know getting really grounded calm and then just asking the question i mean my mind is is in a more you know uh uh more relaxed state at that point i mean you know, it's just like a meditation and then the body it's like whoa 
there's so much wisdom. Um, it, it's, an, it's an excellent practice for getting beyond the mind um, and you know, asking within for knowledge and wisdom that is um, ancient, as you, as you mentioned earlier, like that we are truly ancient so that we're connecting more to our true nature. Yeah. So it's like a hard wisdom, kind of. <laughs> hard wisdom, yeah. I believe people have talked about it that way. And many, many yeah. people love yeah. that. But. Yeah. And it's also never ending, right? It's, it's like, it just continues. And I mean, you could ask yourself questions forever and, and get answers forever or not answers, but it doesn't matter. It's just, um, just live and just let whatever unknown shows up and it's, it's the no as the known and mm. it's like there doesn't have to be any answers because that's again the mind that wants answers to everything and wants to know right but it's unknown we cannot know the mind cannot know right yeah although it's it was like good. kind of bow to the great mystery kind of a thing yeah yeah, yeah. and which yeah, is just lovely you know i mean i i love that idea of um, it's like letting the ego go because the ego is, uh, you know, really what, you know, what in my experience is like, what wants the answers, like, give me answers and tell me what's going on so I can feel in control kind of a thing. Um, and, you know, and then it's like, well, wait a second, you know, control is an illusion. Um, this is what I can control, how I perceive, how I'm thinking, what I, you know, what I'm even feeling. Um, how I perceive myself, how I perceive others. Um, and, you know, that takes some practice, of course, um, but it's definitely doable. Um, and that doesn't mean it's going to be consistent because life happens and, you know, things you know, occur that are really scary or someone harms uh, another person or harms us. And, you know, and that I mean, or breaks our heart, you know, that whole idea. And, you know, it's interesting because the, the book I'm writing um, right now is, um, it's called Relationships in Rhythm. And, um, you know, really understanding how, you know, we are, there is a rhythm that we are, you know, between each other and between ourselves. And often the, the rhythm that is within my relationship with myself is parallel to the relationship with others. Um, and, and you see it and, and it reflects back at you if you're listening. Um, and, you know, this depth of like listening to the heart, you know, even feeling our heartbeat or, you know, I've have a, um, a, you know, one of those, uh, heart, you know, where you can listen to the, to the heart beating, um, uh, which is, uh, I highly recommend for, for a meditation, uh, a stethoscope, uh, and just sitting and listening to your heartbeat. Um, which is uh, a very interesting um, exercise, I, I find, you know, to really connect with my heart and really feel the beat of it. And, and again, the rhythm, it's rhythming every, every moment. Um, and, you know, and then like, as we're talking about all this energy and we're connecting um, at the same time, you know, it's all beautiful. At the same time, there's a lot of difficult experiences we've all had. And in those difficult experiences, very from, you know, major trauma to, you know, maybe most of minor trauma, um, maybe not even a trauma to someone else, but to one other person, yes, it is. Um, and then it's this closing. Um, and uh, it, because I think this self-protective kinds of ways that we've learned in our society have not really been working. Um, they've been... I think, you know, some of the uh, primitive defense mechanisms, uh, projection and, you know, denial, the ways that um, people close their hearts to protect it, of course, um, that's the idea. Um, but is it really protecting us? <laughs> no, um, it is what it really comes back to. It's harming us, our relationship with ourselves and others. Um, and so, and I call it the, um, the infinite loop of self-protection um, and getting lost in, you know, what we believe to be protective that is actually very harmful um, in, in terms of closing us off, 
you know, making, making us not, you know, um, looking, you know, that we don't feel comfortable enough to lean it to this and deepen um, into our bodies, into our embodiment. Um, so I, I uh, it's been very eye opening to write the book um, because it kind of comes through <laughs> a lot of times. Um, and I'm learning a lot as I, as I go, you know, continuing to write it and talk with people about these concepts, um, which most people really can identify with. Um, yeah. Yeah, it sounds interesting, and I like the rhythm because it's also life. It's a rhythm kind of everything. It seems to be a rhythm of some kind, and and like we talk about the opposites, right? So it's it's like there is a pull and a push or whatever. You know, there is this breathing in, breathing out. You know, there's this this natural rhythm going on, and and so so that's maybe that's all we are we're just a written you know we're just a vibration you know it is that well, i mean we are i mean each person at my understanding um from on a quantum level that each person vibrates their own specific vibration um yeah. which is fascinating to me um you know in terms of especially in terms of like thinking of all of us, every single human being and plant and life form um, creating a vibration that, you know, sings in, in a way like of this beautiful orchestra. Um, like when we really are all in rhythm, we feel so much better. I mean, it's so much easier to listen to a harmonious rhythm and a, a melody than it is the cacophony of um, some of these like uh, friction, you know, aspects of relationships and conflict that we might have with another, it closes our heart um, or that we become afraid to open our heart or be ourselves, be vulnerable, um, you know, and fear of criticism and, and those kinds of things, you know, are very uh, stark in the world right now. Um, and all this division, you know, between people and the way that they're thinking about things. Um, very sad, in, in my opinion. Um, but I know that we can work on creating a little bit more of a clear rhythm and understanding that each of us have to, you know, hold the lines uh, of, you know, the, the two extremes, whatever, you know, the, the beliefs are. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it seems like, okay, if we're in this harmony, this symphony, and we are just one of the instruments making a sound or whatever, then it's, it's, well, just let that sound play. It, it may feel as an uncomfortable feeling. It may feel as a nice feeling. It may feel as a um, brilliant thought. It may feel like a stupid thought oh, yeah, or it, it, whatever it is, it is. And it's fine. It's just part of the symphony because you're not even this se separate self anyways. You're, it's, you know, so you don't even know why you're feeling and thinking like you are and who cares in a way right it's just like just be here and let life live you kind of thing mm. oh yeah it's like um how the music plays the band kind of a thing yeah right exactly yeah um mm. so yeah, let life live you um yeah. and i and i love that to just be in flow, you know, I, and, and again, that's easier said than done. I, you know, I think a lot of this is easier said than done. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, it's, it's great when, you know, you're in, uh, you know, uh, an embodied kind of place and you're feeling more in tune and things are going your way and the ego is, I mean, because my ego can kick up pretty quick. You know, I mean, no, I'm not enlightened. My ego is still there. You know, and so um, yeah, there can be a thought too. Like, I'm not enlightened. My ego is still there. That's just another thought if we think about it, right? But it's true. so it's it's interesting how our beliefs are so tricky somehow, because uh -huh. they'll trick us into making us something we're not even. Right? It's like, yeah, it's it's very yeah, interesting. That's true. That I mean, that's true as well. It's it's so tricky. Our minds are tricky. Little tricksters um, and I want to understand the tricks of that more and share you know in, as simple as simply as possible because I think you know as complex as all this is and even our relationships and all this that we really need to simplify um you know I mean that's what I just love about it's like you know from the head to heart you know I mean 
this is a very, you know, simple idea that is, you know, helps uh, address a very complex issue. Um, and, you know, it's like, okay, well, let me check in with my heart. Uh, let me take five to 10 times a day to just check in. How am I feeling? What, what am I needing? Um, is, is there anything that's coming up that I need to write or to paint or to say, or, you know, I, I mean, all of that kind of stuff, like, again, like we're asking questions. I mean, it doesn't have to be this whole meditative inquiry kind of practice or anything like that. It just be a quick, you know, I mean, many of us are, you know, working, doing, you know, um, uh, having, you know, Zoom calls or whatever you got going on all day long, or some are going to, into the office at this point. And then, you know, to be able, I mean, we just get into the do pattern. Um, and so can we insert a little bit of that B pattern, um, check in, hey, how are you? What do you need? <sighs> yeah. Oh, the true yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think that people, I, I'm, I feel so lucky that I talk to people about this all day. That's all I think about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, but like if I were doing like a coding job or some IT thing or whatever marketing, you know, I'd be thinking about all that all day and I would have to remember. Um, and I think it comes back to remembering that our heart is there, like really fully. And I mean, for a long time, you know, I would feel my heart from the front. And then, you know, I was like, wait a second, my heart encircles my entire you know, uh, chest area here. And, and it's like, there it is in my back. Oh, my upper back has my heart too. You know? And, you know, sometimes I'll feel like a hand, you know, maybe it's a, a mother of sorts or somebody, you know, just, or maybe a guide or past ancestor. I, I don't know. Um, but just to be re remembering um, that fullness. Um, yeah, because that that's where, when I, when I remember the back, it helps me feel more open um, around my heart. So, yeah, and yeah, and that's how like what works for everyone, right? Like, it, um, because it is in in a way there is no head and heart. Real, I mean, there is, but there, it, it's all one, right? There's just one, so mm -hmm. I can divide it up in all kind of things. It's just a way of speaking, but it is just like it just is, and I'm in this isness, and that's probably. It, it's, it can be that simple, right? And then whatever else happens and whatever in my mind and whatever beliefs and ideas and have, that's also in the isness and that's fine too. I don't have to identify with any of it. I, I, in fact, the blue sky doesn't identify with the tornado. It just let it um, happen. It's still blue sky. It's not hurt by the tornado, right? It's still just blue sky. So it's kind of like, okay, you're just kind of the space where everything happens and that's fine. I, it's oftentimes like, oh, I can't have it happen. But what is that that kicks in and says that? It's just uh, something I was taught in my life or a habit. No, I'm not dying because I have this incredible heart feeling. It may not feel good, but it's still like, actually what nothing really happened. It, it, at some point that feeling goes away and may come back. Uh, but it is, you know, I don't have to identify with it, right? It's, it's, I can just attend to it and let it be there, but I don't have to make a story out of it and, and suddenly it becomes this complete illusionary person and just live yeah. in my heart or as this. Yeah. I mean, I think it also can be, you know, I mean, I don't want to identify it with it, but it can be a learning tool is what I have found. That if I notice like what I'm saying or whatever, it's like, what is that? You know, and, and again, you know, it's like, I could just, you know, kind of, hey, I'm just being and, you know, or I could kind of explore it. Where have I felt this way before? Where, where might this have come from? Um, and, and again, it's my stories, right? Um, and, and some of those stories, you know, I mean, our memories do hold different ideas, you know, throughout our lifetime. And I'm here, I, I believe that I have been put on this planet, all of us, with a specific purpose. Um, you know, and that purpose might be just, you know, working this out, you know, so that I can feel my body more and be more embodied and 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 connect with others and maybe share some of my um, you know, what's what's coming through in, in my thinking process to, to help others see it more clearly or something. 
Um, and, you know, so with this purpose, um, I, you know, I want to learn. I, I just, I, and that's like been, gosh, that's been me since I was a little girl. Like, I just want, I'm so curious about everything. Um, and, you know, I'm like, okay, well, what is this? What, what does yeah. that mean? Yeah, what yeah, but, but I love that childlike curiosity too, right? It's like, yeah, okay, just for the sake of being curious. And and that's that's love in action, right? It's like, okay, that's fine, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And, and I mean, some of the wisdom that has come from my body around, you know, some of the curiosity I've had has been just, um, you know, very uh, intriguing, um, because I just think there's so much more, you know, I mean, I've always, you know, been just intrigued by the study of consciousness. What is consciousness? What is embodiment? You know, what are we talking about here? You know, from the, in the field of psychology, there's a lot of theories. Uh, and, you know, certainly um, spirituality and some of these, um, you know, scientific aspects have had a hard time coming together. Um, you know, and I think we're getting to a place now where it's time to marry these concepts and understand that once we do, we are going to, I think that's going to blow open a lot about what we don't really know about consciousness and how matter, you know, really an antimatter, you know, the whole aspects of physics, how this all really works to create you know, what we see and how we're understanding each other, how we're, you know, even relating and connecting without words. Um, there's a lot of that happening. Um, and so, you know, um, I just look forward to more, you know, research on the, on all these topics. And so that we can, you know, continue to really ground into that um, and find some of the spiritual connection through science. So that people kind of go, oh, this isn't, you know, in, in Denver, it'd be like, woo, woo, boulder, you know, is what they might call it, you know, oh, well, you're just, that's nothing, yeah. you know, and it's like, well, that's not logic, it's <laughs> like, well, um, both are, are needed, both logic and emotion merged together are, you know, where our true nature um, can, I, th I think, be ex fully experienced. Yeah, yeah, the, this exploration and yeah, just that kind of follow, follow what what shows up and comes up in, in your way. You know, whatever you meet, you you're there, and so figuring out how this all works is part of it. And you know, yeah, it's beautiful. Life is beautiful. Yeah, and feeling <laughs> through how it all works, right? Because it's this whole like. Actually, I was just talking to a, a patient yesterday. I was like, I just got to figure this all out. It's like, no, you got to feel it through yeah yeah and uh, even just feeling it and thinking it and it's just life happening right and in all that that's happening there's something there that's just always there right and all this is just thoughts and emotions and stories and, and but it's fun you know and who knows oh, it, sure, I mean, it sure is at, at times especially when you stay curious i, I think keeping that curious air um and, yeah. and you know there's an objectivity to that as well of like mm. oh, what could it be i don't know um, yeah. And it's okay, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's like, yeah, exactly, because I don't think we can ever really know unless we are it. We can't. It's like we can't see ourselves, you know, because we are. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 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 the star yeah. saying, "Oh, am I light?" You know, or whatever. The fish can't see. Right, and there may come a time like, when, <laughs> when we do understand a little bit more, you know, like how to, um you know, practice some of this stuff with each other and with ourselves so that we are, are more truly embodied and having a little bit more true connection with ourselves and each other. Mm -hmm. I believe that that, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, a person that looks through a telescope and, you know, they're like, oh, well, I don't know, or a microscope, they don't know what they're looking for. Um, and so, you know, the more that we learn, the more that we can find the connections with each other, the more we can know what to look for and know how to view some things that would really be eye-opening and expansive in terms of, um, you know, understanding our similarities and our, you know, and our differences, our vibrations, how we're connecting, how this rhythm is really all working with each other, um, and how that might help us connect better with each other and find, um, you know, like 
find bridges for all these chasms and divi and the divisions that we're finding with each other. I just saddens my heart, you know, uh, a lot to yeah. see these things happening. So, yeah, 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 that's that's true. But if everyone really listened to themselves and lived from there, I think there there would be a lot more peace and love in the world. You know, because it, it wouldn't be distorted with with all this. Right distorted yeah. that's that's the word mm -hmm. so and i want to know where my distortions are but <laughs> yeah. thing, right yeah <laughs> uh, oh susan thank you so much this is this has been such a wonderful conversation yeah yeah definitely and you have a website can you speak about your website and if you have any sessions or events going on yeah um well so my website is drlisatempleton.com um, so drlisatempleton.com, um, and that is, um, my, um, uh, personal website for some of the things that I've been doing lately. I am getting ready to launch a, a radio show, um, with Ahitarte Radio. I'm super excited about, I've been doing the radio show, but we're just not quite ready to, um, post it out to the world yet. Um, some, I have, you know, several followers already, uh, but I, so keep, keep track. I will, um, you know, if you want to sign up for a newsletter, I can keep you posted about it. Um, so I'm very excited. And the, the show is called Relationships and Rhythm. So, um, you know, just, just, you know, expanding this idea and, and talking about our relationships with ourselves Every, every show is all about, um, you know, what's going on in your mind and your body, how, what's a, you know, a particular tip to be a little bit more embodied or to work with your thoughts in a more effective way. Um, and then to be able to come back around and uh, have some practice, because this is all about practice. It's like a constant practice. And the more I practice, you know, the, the you know, the more I give to myself, um, in, in this work, the more I get back. Um, and I really feel it. I've never had anybody come to me and, oh, I'm doing all this work on myself. And I don't feel like it's, I mean, I'm sure those who are listening would feel the same. It's like, yeah, it, it usually does come back. The yeah. work, it, it is worth it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's funny because there's work, but it's not, it, it's like, you just realize, recognize what you're not in all this work you know it's like oh yeah it's that but that's not who I am and oh yeah and this and that's not who. oh okay I can see all this happening and all this going on but it's not who I really am so it's it's mm. it is like amazing how you can do practice and work but it just shows that um it, it's there is no actual work to do you you just see who you're not kind of thing you reveal right. all the or be who stuff. you want be who you know because it's like oh i don't want to be that you know i hear so many people oh like, yeah, yeah really gets getting messed up on whole identity thing it's like well who yeah. do you want to be and be that that's it you know um you know who who do you feel most com you know i mean if you're embodied what feels and resonates with you yeah follow your place right like joseph yes. follow your place. Um, yeah um and yeah. so it's this love that you know that is the glue that you know keeps us all together all of our fractured parts of ourselves all of the you know this this fragmented families and different people that are not you know love is the glue um yeah. so yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much, Lisa. I appreciate thank you, it. Susan. Yeah. I really appreciate your time. And uh, thank you so much for putting this summit together. It's really beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.